Hey guys, in this video, we're talking about consumer surplus. And here's the thing, guys, it is easy. What is consumer surplus? It is the difference between the maximum consumer is willing to pay for a good and the price they have to pay. Let me say that again. It is the difference between the maximum consumer is willing to pay for the good and the price that they have to pay. The maximum a consumer is willing to pay for a good represents the benefit that good is going to provide them. Get that straight, guys. The maximum they're willing to pay for a good represents the benefit that good is going to provide them. Then you just subtract off the price that they have to pay and the difference between the two is the consumer surplus if you didn't follow that let's get graphical first thing i want you to see in this graph guys is demand is the marginal benefit curve they are one and the same and here's another thing i've got dollars per unit i don't just have a p right there why is that because i want to remind myself i am measuring vertically more than just the price i am also measuring marginal benefit so here we are marginal benefit and price price are being represented by the vertical axis. They're both in dollars per unit and I'm measuring both of these things vertically. The demand curve, which is the marginal benefit curve, is a bunch of dots that sit above goods. And the vertical distance between the horizontal axis where that good is and the dot that is on the demand curve, guys, is the benefit that good's gonna provide. It's the maximum a consumer is willing to pay. So important that students understand that. Again, every one of these goods that would be down here on the horizontal axis, you go vertically above them and there sits a dot, and the difference between the horizontal axis and that dot, or that vertical distance, I should say, between the horizontal axis and that dot is representing the benefit that good's gonna provide because it represents the max somebody is willing to pay to acquire the good. So of course, they're gonna get surplus every time the dot is above the price because the price represents what the consumer has to pay to acquire the good. If you're not following me, jump over here to a little zoomed in version, okay? Very stylized version. We've only got a few goods here, but again, just to make sure we're clear, guys, from the horizontal axis to the dot, that represents the benefit, right, that that good is gonna provide somebody. So I got $5 of benefit. The red line, guys, that's gonna be my price, right? Price is gonna be $3. So that vertical difference right there between the benefit it would provide somebody, which is $5 of benefit, it's the max they're willing to pay to acquire the good, and the $3 price, that is the surplus. So this would be providing $2 of surplus. Again, took me $3 to acquire the good, or this consumer, $3 to acquire the good, but the benefit, the max they're willing to pay is $5, so they're getting $2 in surplus. Go to the second good. The vertical distance up there is $4, right? From the horizontal axis up there, that's the benefit. But two, from that, uh, from right that horizontal axis to the price point, $3, that's the cost to acquire. So there it is, $1 of surplus. And this one wouldn't give any surplus because the max somebody is willing to spend is exactly the price. It wouldn't give any surplus. So again, guys, it's pretty easy to understand consumer surplus if you understand the demand curve is actually a bunch of dots. It's made up of a bunch of dots. And those dots sit vertically above goods. And the distance between the good and the dot is the benefit that good's gonna provide somebody. And again, we all know the price is the cost that it takes to acquire the good. So the difference between the benefit and the cost is the surplus. Here's the thing, guys. This triangle right there is gonna be our consumer surplus because every one of these goods right here have dots that sit up here sitting above the price point. And we're gonna buy all those goods for which the marginal benefit exceeds the price, for which the benefit of the good exceeds the price. But guys, that marginal benefit keeps on going down. So we're not gonna buy any of these goods. Why aren't we gonna buy any of these goods? Because the price is higher than the benefit those goods would provide, so we're not gonna buy any of those. Again, it leaves us with this triangle from here to here, just like that. Always find the price the consumer has to pay and the demand curve. And the vertical distance in between those two gives us the consumer surplus. The consumer surplus, guys, it's the difference between the maximum somebody's willing to pay, i.e. the benefit that good's gonna provide somebody, and the price they do have to pay. Hope that makes sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.